Hey everyone, Spur here. Welcome back to another zoo tour where today we will be looking at Igwa Zoo by Gunter's Gaming. Now this is the second zoo by Gunter that we're looking at on this channel, the first being Ottawa Zoo. And these two zoos could not be any different <laughs> since Ottawa Zoo was a North American themed one. And as you can see from the entrance and the waterfalls and all of the tropical foliage, this is a South American zoo. Just me over here getting distracted by that beautiful garbage can, but don't worry, I'm sure there will be many other distractions along the way. So in the entrance we do have a bathroom, and then we do have just our main entrance right through this sort of temple facade, which opens up into, I believe these are supposed to be ruins, but it was intended to be a marketplace at one point, which is why we have some fabric over there. But it still works as like a heritage site, which is really cool. This rock wall is just stunning. Look at the way it's layered. That's incredible. Now, so we don't miss anything on our way here. This is the info center as you walk in. If you would like to stop in here, you would go to the left from that main entryway rather than just going through the turnstiles in the center. These signs are super, super nice. And I love the way you've decorated it in here with lots of information, some art pieces. Very nice. I think in Ottawa Zoo I said I needed to use glass as a backdrop for info signs by the Wolf Watchtower, I want to say. And uh, that still hasn't happened, so thank you for reminding me that, uh, yes, I should do that. That red-eyed tree frog sign is very, very cool. Here is our first habitat, and it doesn't look like I can see any animals at the moment. It is the capybara habitat. I like this sign over here as well, that's super cute. I guess they are all asleep at the moment. So let's head over this way and see the exhibit that's nicely hidden in these temple ruins. What is in here? Oh, I'm blind. It's an iguana. He's just sitting right there. Very clever way of hiding away the exhibit box here. Over there we have our staff area some more ruins. I almost wish we could see more through that window. That would be a fun way to get a peek into the backstage area. And as we continue down, some more backstage area over there, some more ruins, and then hopefully, let's see if we can spot some capybara. Maybe? No, that's just an enrichment item back there. There is a stone statue of a capybara. <laughs> But that is the only one we've seen so far. <laughs> they must all be hiding back there. Oh, there we go. Hello, friends. I'm so glad you've come out to play. Oh, now we have three of them. Look at that. They are so freaking cute. I love that archway that they were just walking through as well. It's very nicely designed. Over on this side of the pathway, we have the giant anteater. Very beautiful habitat. I love all the vines hanging over it. And in the background there, you can see the education center, if I'm not mistaken. So we will make our way over there eventually. But first, I wanted to poke around in some of the staff areas along the way. Also a fun little peak hole right here. You can see the anteater. So we're just going to rush into here because we're technically not supposed to be back here. Oh, hello. Don't mind us. And here is a custom gate that is based off of the airlock gates that we have in game. Super well done. This retaining wall back here is super cool too. And this is just a quarantine area for new arrivals to the zoo. As we continue down that backstage area, we obviously have some facilities, and then we have a few more buildings to check out. So on our right, just gonna push into here. We have, I'm not quite sure what's in here. Oh, I like the little kitchenette. Oh, and then we have a desk. 
And on the other side, we have Galapagos giant tortoises. These things are so massive. I really like the way this is laid out. Nicely done. Across the way, it looks like we have a keeper hut hidden away in here. And then if we rush through this door, we get into another backstage area for the, the Jaguar. Oh, I like the lights above the doorway to see if it's safe to enter or not. And then we have a big transport crate on the side. I'm assuming that's how keepers get into the enclosure. Nice viewing window with a desk. And the final building. I love the color of these tiles. And the fact that you have a laundry hamper with actual cloth in it. That is super cool. And again, lots of backstage switches. And look at that duct work. This is so, so good. As we head over from there, we have this kind of obscured viewing area. I believe that's into the Jaguar enclosure. But before we head over that way, there is one last thing that we need to check out and it is this building here next to the anteaters. Oh, hey, look, <laughs> those are my headphones. It's very fun watching walking into builds and being like, oh, hey, I made that. <laughs> Love the dividers here. Looks like a little children's play area in the corner. I love the way you decorated this. I think it looks super cool. These are, I think, just some fake terrariums. Doesn't look like there's anything in there. And then from here, these slanted windows are so nice. The nice thing about slanted windows is that they don't have quite as much glare as straight windows. So we can still get a pretty good view of that anteater running around. And then another anteater just in front of us. Let's follow these paw prints back out and take a look at the exterior, the Cortez Animal Education Center. So the story behind Iguazu is that it's part of Conservation Canada. Oh, sorry. So me, just me getting distracted again with these amazing flower beds in between the paths. But anyway, as I was saying, here is a zoo map for Iguazu, which is part of Conservation Canada. And one of the characters in the story is Camila Cortez, which I believe I suggested, funnily enough. And that is why it is called the Cortez Animal Education Center, because her parents were the ones who funded it. Now this massive viewing window, what do we have in here? The Jaguars. Very pretty. This is probably the best view I've gotten of the Jaguar ever in this game. Such a beautiful animal. And I love the way it looks against that backdrop of the ruins. Very good use of all of the South American pieces in this zoo. And that tree right in the middle of the strangler fig looks amazing. On our right is the Jaguar Temple. So we're going to pop into there. No climbing, obviously. There are some ropes up there to make sure that doesn't happen. And again, we have more education in here. I love the skylights right above. And I like that you've divided up the habitat so we can't necessarily see the jaguars from this angle unless they are over on this side of the enclosure. It does provide them with quite a bit of privacy, which I really, really like. Lots of greenery in here. And we also have some exhibit boxes for the... Ooh, tarantula. I don't think we'll look too closely for these guys because I'm not a fan. <laughs> but it is important to display these sorts of species as well. As we walk out of the jaguar temple and turn over to the right, here is an amazing foliage wall. One of many in this zoo that helps to break up the buildings. And we arrive at the Galapagos tortoise enclosure. These guys are so huge. 
I've never seen one of these guys in real life, but I do really want to. Oh, and this peek through window down here for kids is amazing. Also love how you incorporated the South American ruins into the Indonesian brick that the building is made of. Looks really nice. And if we turn back, we end up walking down this staircase. What a lovely view onto the landscape. And this retaining wall here with, again, more foliage. That could maybe be a cute little rest area. And again, our garbage cans. I love them. They are so, so nice. Some more retaining wall as a backdrop for this habitat, which has alpacas. There we have one walking over. There's another one resting in the grass behind there. I love the fur texture on these guys. It looks super nice. And it looks like there's a another viewing area up there. So we will slowly make our way over there. All of these palm trees all over the place is just amazing. Such tropical vibes. I'm <laughs> We're going to really miss the heat, seeing as we are now headed into winter, where I am. Another rest area. Those bottles are off of the workshop. A great workshop item. I also like how you incorporated the souvenir items here. And we do get a good view from this rest area. But hey, <laughs> that is uh, definitely triggered my fear of heights right there. So we're going to continue on. And this looks like it belongs to some sort of monkey because it has a lot of climbing. I'm gonna assume the capuchin, seeing as it's South America themed. Oh yes, there they are. With some janky climbing. <laughs> They're still cute though. And again, another little foliage wall with these basket ferns behind some wooden planks. Really love the way that turned out. And oh, we even have signage. Well, we don't want to exit the zoo just yet, so I think we're going to continue down this way. See the monkeys climbing their climbing structure. And I love the way you framed this window with those monkey decals. They're so cute. Inside of this building, they do have a small indoor run. But my favorite part of this building is this view. Like, yes, please let me wash dishes with this view. A staff only building but we're gonna poke around anyway this one's a little bit more simple but I think this backstage area belongs to the main wolves I think I saw one back there but I'm not entirely sure so along this staircase we again have more foliage panels these ones are sort of asymmetrical a little bit more modern I love the way they turned out and yes it is in fact the main wolves so we have a few back there. They are so, so cute. And they have a pretty massive enclosure to run around in. I love the varied terrain levels that are in this one. Those mushrooms on that log look really great. I really wish they didn't glow in the dark because sometimes I just want them for the texture. That rocky outcrop up there is a good place for the main wolves to get a higher vantage point. And here you can see the extent of how long that enclosure is. All right, as much as I love all of these flower beds kind of in between the paths, it is psyching me out a little bit because I'm not entirely sure where I'm supposed to be going, but it does look really awesome. Oh my God, mini golf? This was built by Beef, who is part of the Discord. Can I get one ticket for uh, mini golf because I'm a loser and I don't have friends. Please and thank you. <laughs> so, number one. Number two. I like how you incorporated all of these South American animals in here. Number three. Number four. Goes to, you have to get your golf ball through a little temple. The Golden Llama statue. If there was ever a time to use that statue, a mini golf course would be it. <laughs> And the butterfly statues as well. That looks really cool. And then up the hill, down into the sixth hole. And looks like we're done with mini golf. 
That was very fun. Thank you, Beeb, for that addition to Iguazu. A quick little peek into this kitchen, which is right next to the armadillo enclosure. Again, love the terrain levels in this. It gives some sort of interest to what would otherwise be probably, maybe not a boring habitat, but very rocky, very muddy, not a lot going on. And I thought I saw a path over this way. So let's head down to see the giant otters just hopping into the pond there. The sunshade over the underwater view is beautiful. If you didn't already know, Gunter is known as the king of sunshades in our Discord. Let's see how many you can count throughout this day. <laughs> Very beautiful underwater viewing area. I love the scum on the windows. The fact that you put the bubble machine underwater, I haven't done that before. I will need to start. It looks really good. One little spot that we missed, so if we had gone to the exit a few minutes ago, then we would have walked past this restroom, which is a really cool addition because we can also see the alpacas from here. And then right next to that, we have a collared peccary habitat. They're just hanging out back there. And those rock steps leading up to the second level there are super cool. Again, anything with terrain levels is such a plus in my books. <laughs> up these stairs, we can get to another viewing area for the peccaries. This time we can see their food. I love that bristlecone branch. And all of the cacti in here look super cool as well. <laughs> so cute. This is the other side of the Jaguar Temple, if I'm not mistaken. And then up these stairs. Wonder if the peccaries can get over there as well, actually. I would assume so, because it looks like they can get under this building. But from here, we can get a good view of those. Their little indoor area down there. And we can also see the alpacas from up here. So lots of viewing opportunities all over the place. Now on the other side, just so we don't miss anything, again, we have some sunshades and another viewing area for the giant otters. So from here, we can see their land area as well as their swimming area. And again, with the strangler fig centerpiece, that's so, so pretty. Right next to that, we have the Malayan tapir. And they have a baby. I don't know what it is about animals with spots, but like specifically baby animals with spots that they lose as they get older. But something about those animals just makes them so much cuter to me. So like baby tapirs have spots that they lose or deer will have spots that they lose or cougar cubs will be spotted but then as they get older they lose those spots and those kinds of animals i just think are so so cute our jaguar viewing area over there which means that we're slowly making our way back towards the entrance because this is the main thoroughfare through the zoo but it does look like we have another staff area, so let's go poke around in here. Over on this side is the capybara enclosure. Yes, hello friend. Love the decals on the concrete from where the cars would be driving. In through these doors, we have a warehouse. Nice. Love the way this turned out. That must be the capybara holding area. And we do have a bunch of water facilities here too. I love the puddle by the drain right there. Some more laundry hampers. Lots of pipe work back here, that's really cool. And this final building here. Oh, you even have pipes coming out the back of the building. That's really well done. Oh yes, these tiles again. I'm gonna have to steal the color code for these. They look so good. 
And again, the skylight. Look at that. The switches on the walls, all of the clutter. Very big fan of this space. And from there, if we continue down, we get another peek into the capybara enclosure. But it looks like that's a wrap because we are right back to where we started. I hope you enjoyed this tour of Iguazu. Make sure to leave a like, leave a comment, as Gunter will most likely be reading them as well. And I will see you next time. Bye.